those aisles. We may have a few more to come in, but we're going to begin this morning. Get you to stand with me and worship. And as you stand, I want to remind you that next Sunday we're going to honor our graduates this year. We have three this year that are graduating. We're going to honor our graduates on the, in the Sunday morning service. And then immediately following the Sunday morning service, we're going to have a, uh, a, a time of uh, celebration for them in the back. We're going to have hamburgers, hot dogs, uh, uh, all the, 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 the trimmings that go with it. Uh, and then uh, we're going to spend a few moments with our graduates back there. So won't you plan on that, plan on staying. Next Sunday for, for lunch, we're going we're gonna to ask you to stay. We're going to feed you. That's the Baptist way. Come on, say amen. <laughs> so we, we look forward to that. We're real proud of our, our graduates this year. So uh, that's next Sunday morning uh, in the morning service and then lunch afterwards. All right. You ready to worship? Say amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I hear you back there. Sing it to me.
this blows me away that he would do that for me. Amen. Sing this with me. I stand the praise in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene.
bless this time simply with you. We love you. Thank you for loving us. And it's in Jesus' name we pray.
and, and we deal with it as a church. Kind of that unknown. It's, it's, it's almost... Um, have you ever been... You know, I, I realized when I was growing up, we didn't have this thing called time out. <laughs> no. <laughs> what? No way. No way. It wasn't no such thing as a time out. It was a, it was a, it was a belt upside the rear. Can I get an amen? amen. <laughs> Somebody was talking to me the other day, and we were, we were having a conversation about his child, and his child had bowed up on him, and uh, he's 14 years old and bowed up on him, and I said, I said, what happened? I said, then I begin to take my belt off. I said, man, do I need to give you this? <laughs> you know? And he's like, but then it, then it got to the point of, 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 you know, you need to take some time out of it. Go sit over there and think about what you're doing. And <clears throat> I know in, in from, a, from a life standpoint, there's been times that, uh, uh, that, that, I've, that God's kind of had to put Ken in time out, if you would. You know, put me over here to the side. But what about when life, you're doing everything right? What about when <clears throat> when uh, life's going smooth and life's going good and you're being obedient to God and you're doing it God's way and, 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 and you know, your journey is clicking and, and God says, hey, I, I, we need to time out. And it's not because you've done, you've done anything that's wrong. It's not because of anything that, that, that you've messed up. Well, that would be my, my case, my scenario. But God, God says, hey, I'm just going to hide you for a minute. I'm going to hide you over here. Just for a moment. You know, I'm doing amazing here. I'm doing something incredible here. And I realize you probably don't see that. But I'm just going to hide you out for just a moment. First Kings chapter 17 is a story. Of just that. We're going to read the first three verses. First Kings chapter 17. And verse 1. Says Elijah the Tishbite. Of the inhabitants of Gil Gilad. Said to Ahab. As the Lord God of Israel lives. Before whom I stand. There shall not be any dew nor rain these years, except in my word. And then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, now watch what God tells him. Look at verse 3. Get away from here. Turn eastward and hide. Get away. Turn eastward and hide. Go hide. Go do nothing. Go get off by yourself. Go and not be seen or not be known, go and speak to no one. Just simply go hide by the brook chair which flows into the Jordan. Go hide. In the middle of, of ministry, in the middle of being obedient to God, God speaks to, to Elijah and he says, Hey, Elijah, he says, I just simply want you to go and hide. I want you to get away. I want you to, to, to just do nothing, say nothing, be nothing. Just, just go and hide. And guys, in the middle of, 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 of serving, in the middle of being, uh, you know, if you went in the ministry there, he says to him, just take a time out. And, and those time out moments, those hide moments, and, 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 and for some of us, they're seasons. Come on. For some of us, they're, they're extended periods of time out, extended periods of, of, of question marks. You ever been in a season in your life that was defined by a question mark? What do we, what do we, where do we go from here? What happens next? How are we going to get through it? We've come out of a, of a two and a half, three year long season like that. Come on. And we've questioned how we're going to get through. How are we going to make it? How are we going to, you know, because of all the unknown, it was like, it was like a, come out. <clears throat> it was like a, a hiding. 
if you would. So God says to Elijah, go down there and just hide. Just hide. James chapter 1 and verse 2 says this. It says, count it all joy when you fall in the various trials. Count it all joy when life is difficult. Count it all joy when, 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 when life gets crazy and you're in the middle of this. Count it all joy. You say, how do you do that, preacher? I, I, I haven't figured that one out. That when something gets dropped at my doorstep, I didn't ask for it. When something that uh, the unforeseen happens in my life, the craziness of life happens, and I, and I didn't see that. How do I count it all as joy? Job, in Job chapter 23 and verse 10, he says to this, guys, he says, but he knows the way that I take. And when he has tested me, I shall come forth as gold. And if we were to interview Job this morning, we were to say, hey, Job, do you count it all as joy? When you went through the, 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 the pain and the agony and the heartbreak of losing your family, Job would say, I don't, I don't count losing my family as joy. What about your wealth, Job? He would say, no. What about your health, Job? We saw the story. We read the story. We saw the agony and what you physically went through. Would you count that as joy? And he would say, no. And he would say, then, 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 then how can you say when he's testing me, I shall come forth as gold? I understand the test is hard. I understand that what I've gone through is incredibly, incredibly difficult. But I know, I know when I come out the other side, I shall come forth as gold. Come on. I shall be blessed. Amen. I may be difficult right now, but my God hasn't forsaken me. My God hasn't left me. My God hasn't turned his back on me. He's still sovereign. He's still on the throne of heaven. He's still in control of my life. My steps are still ordained by him. And when I get through this test, I can count it all as joy because I know when I come out the other side, he's there with me. He's blessing me. Amen. So he gets that. He gets it in the middle of these question marks, in the middle of the hiding out. The why. The why. Have you ever thought about this? Maybe God had to tell Elijah, Elijah, you just sit, remember, they're in the drought. And, and if you remember Elijah in verse 1 just said, to Ahab, he said, it's not going to rain. Dude, it's not going to rain. It's going to dry up. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be in the middle of a drought. There's not going to be dew or rain these years until I say so. And that's what God told him to say. And then God says to him, hey, you get away from here. You turn eastward. You hide by the brook chair, which flows into the Jordan. You get down there by the, by the brook. Which, which, is, which flows uh, there. And, and then he says in verse 4, and it will be that you shall drink from that room. And I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. I, I, I need to hide you. I need to hide you. Have you ever thought about this? Maybe that question mark, maybe that hiding like he's doing with Elijah that goes on in our lives is God doing a, an amazing work in us so that he can prepare us to do an amazing work for the kingdom of God. Come on. Think about that. Maybe God's just setting us to the side for just a moment <clears throat> and, 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 and is preparing us to, to, uh, to, to do amazing. So God says to Elijah, go. You know what Elijah did? He went. He went and hid himself. He did exactly like God said for him to do. He's being obedient. And, and God's going to bless that obedience. And, and, and he's going to bless it and, and encourage it. Have you ever been in a situation and, and 
You've cried out to God, God, I need this. And, and God's like, I'll take care of you. I promised you I'd take care of you. I promised you I would be there for you. And the way he took care of it just blew you away. Amen. The way he took care of you just did away. The, the raven is, is one of the unclean, if you would, birds. The raven is a dirty bird, if you would. And, and God uses this unclean bird to feed Elijah. Let me give you that, that history real quick. You'll find it in the book of Leviticus, chapter 11. I just want you to see this. In, in, in verse 13, Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 13. He said, you shall regard an abomination among the birds. They shall not be eaten. They are an abomination. The eagle, the vulture, the buzzard, keep going, the kite, the falcon, after its kind, every what? Help me out. Every rain. And God, that's good. And God tells Elijah, you go hang out there, and I'm going to take this unclean, this dirty, this abomination bird, and I'm going to bless you with it. I'm going to feed you with it. I'm going to do amazing in your life through using something you would never expect. You know? God's amazing, say amen. And you may find yourself, <coughs> and the truth is, guys, on every journey, you can go back year after year, year after year, come on, last year, the year before, have we not been in a timeout somewhere or another? Have we not been in a hiding place, if you would, just set to the side for some, some you know, because of circumstance, whatever, <coughs> you name it. You're, and, and, and here's what's amazing is that in the middle of his hide, in the middle, go there and hide, he did, in the middle of his hide, who's blessing him? God is. God is blessing him over here where he's hiding at. Right here in this place of obedience, God's honoring him because he honored God. And God's feeding him in a way you would never imagine taking a raven and feeding him. God's doing exactly what God said he would do if Elijah did what, what God said to do. Elijah did, and so God's blessing him. God's blessing him. He found favor in his place of hiding. He found blessing in his place of, 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 of uh, hiding out. And, 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 you know, I'm thankful Elijah went. It's those times in my life when, when they meant to find by a question mark. And, I, you know, I can remember one. When, when I, I just like, God, I felt like I knew God had called me into the ministry. I knew God had called me to preach. You don't take a, 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 a somebody raised Catholic who used to be a bouncer in a bar, who, who would fight over anything, drink over anything, do stupid at, at the drop of life. You don't take that guy, miraculously save him, Put a calling on his life. I remember this. I said, God, if you really, 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 man, and I've been pleased after pleased after pleased. And Brother Lucy kept coming back with. God's like, how many more times I gotta show you? I'm stubborn, I get it. And, and, and the last thing I thought of was the, the, the main thing I thought, God, I am so unworthy to stand up and talk for you, to share you. And, 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 and God, I came. He said, yeah, you can. I just need you to trust me and I need you to obey me. And I went through that, that scenario and, and I trusted and I obeyed and I stepped out on faith and people tried to talk me out of it. And people said, you can't do it. And people said, how are you going to live? And, you know, I'm like, the whole thing, God's going to take care of me. He always has. He always will. And I trust him and I know he's, he, he can. And, 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 and I went through and I was pastoring the, the, the first church I pastored and I was as green as green could be and, and <coughs> it was difficult and I felt God saying, Kim, let's go. It's time for you to go down to the brook. It's time for you to go down to the brook. And I'll take care of you there. I'm like, whoa, 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 God, you're blessing me here, God. God, I don't understand this, God. It doesn't make any sense, God. There's people getting saved left and right. There's baptisms. Or, 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 you know, it's, it's crazy. God, why would you want me to leave? He said, because I said so. I said, it's time. It's time. Then he had to show me it was time. 
You don't want that. And when he showed me it's time, I still, I still argued and I still struggled. And, and here's, here's why I argued and I struggled. Because I'm afraid of the question marks. I'm afraid of the uncertainties. And he knew that. He's, you know, because God, I was like, God, if, if I don't have nowhere to go, God, I know this is what you want me to do. And I know, God, that he said, just go and trust me in your question mark, in your uncertainty, in your not knowing what to do. You just trust me. And you go hide out. I get it. It doesn't make sense. I, you just go do what I ask you to do. And so I did. And I did. And I'll never forget this. I had taken a Sunday off to pray about it and, and to seek the face of God. And on the way to, uh, to, to uh, up to northern Mississippi, I got a, I got, we, we, we went into a church service there. Uh, we were going there to pick up one of the children up there in northern Mississippi. And so we got, we busted in right in time for service. Time. The preacher looked at me. He said, dude, I am so glad to see you. Get up here and preach. I didn't, I didn't walk in there from that. I was like, okay, okay. Preach that service, God anointed, God bless it. This is why I'm, I, what, what, and so, picked up the young and head on, on the way home, get the phone call. Hey, can you come go to church with us tonight? We sure want you to preach. And I'm like, okay, God. God's going to take care. It might not make sense when your life is defined by a question mark. But there's going to be times this year that your life is going to be defined by a question mark. There's going to be that uncertainty. There's going to be where it doesn't make any sense. Listen to me. Trust Him. And He'll bless you. He'll bless you. Elijah trusted Him. Elijah trusted Him in the middle of his doubt or drought. In the middle of the craziness. He obeyed. He obeyed. And, and God honored that. Let's keep reading the story. Verse 5 says, So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. For he went and stayed by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? When, he, when you obey God. And he drank from the brook. And it happened after a while that the brook dried up because there was no rain in the land. Remember what he had said. There's not going to be any rain. There's no, not going to be any dew in verse 4 until I say so. And, and so, so imagine this picture. He's in this place where God said for him today. God's honored that. He's honored his obedience. He's feeding with, with bread and meat in the morning, bread and meat in the evening. He's drinking water from the brook. But every day, as he's sitting in this place of obedience, as he's sitting in this place of obedience, he sees the water begin to get littler and littler and littler. From there, the little stream begins to there till it's just a trickle. And then the next day, it's gone. The next day, it's gone. You say, the preacher, he's in a, you can't make it without water. And he's in that place of obedience. What's up with this God? What's up with, with, with what's God doing here? He, I thought God was taking care of him in that place of obedience. I thought, I thought you know, God was blessing him. He is. He is. But here's what you need to understand. It dried up. The brook dried up. In the middle of what's going on, in, in, in the middle of, 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 of his drought, if you would, what, what's going on in his life, he's in this high place. He's being in that place of obedience. And then, and then it dries up. You know what my next question would have been, would have been Tracy? God, why am I still here? Come on, God. Everybody look this way. Was it not God enough to take care of you yesterday? 
Was he not God enough to take care of you the day before and the day before and the situation before and the situation before? Is, is his hand shortened that it cannot say? Come on. Somebody needs to hear this today. He's still the same today as he was yesterday. Praise God. change. Okay, so the water's dried up. What's he going to do? Take care of you. Come on. You see, you see you see circumstances. You see dried up river. You see I'm in a place of obedience. And God, why is it dried up? Why is, why is what I'm going through, God, what I'm going through? God said, just hang in there. I love this very, there you go. Then the word of the Lord came to him and said, look verse 8. So, so, so Elijah's sitting there in the water. Jump. So God says, okay, Elijah. Let's go. Time to get up. Time to move. The rise go to, to, to Zarephath, which belongs to Sodom, and the well there. See, I've commanded a widow there to provide for you. And so you know what he does? He obeys again. He gets up and he goes to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, indeed, a widow's there gathering some sticks. And so he calls out to the widow and he says, I'm, I'm parched. I'm I, you know, I just, I know it's a drought in the land. I know there's nothing. I just need a little taste of water. I need a little bit of water in a cup because I need to drink something. And, and she says she was going to get it as she's going to get it. She says, or he calls to her, and he said to her, please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. So bring me a cup of water. Bring me a little chunk of bread. You know, I'm, I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. And, and she's like, Here's the problem. As the Lord your God lives, I don't have it. I've got a little handful of flour in a bin, a little oil in a jar, and I'm just going to get some, I'm getting some sticks together so that I can make me a fire. I can mix up what I've got left. Me and my son will eat it, and then we're going to prepare to die. That's all we got. We don't have anything else to eat after that. We're going to going to, to die. She wasn't even selfish. It's all she had. All she had. She was living afraid. Because there's a drought in the land and drought makes us scared or scares us. Can, can, amen? The uncertainty scares you, doesn't it? The craziness can scare you. Drought can, can make us afraid. And she's literally afraid. She's being driven by, 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 by the, the, the motive of, 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 of drought in her life is what, is what drives the fear in her life. So Elijah said to her, do not fear. Because that's what she was at. Do not fear. <laughs> he says, Go and do as, I, as, as you have said, but make me a small cake from it first. Bring it to me, and afterward, make some for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, The bit of flour shall not be used up, nor the jar of oil dry, until the Lord sends rain on this earth. Don't do it. But I need you to do something. I need you to trust me here. I need you to bring me a little peace because I've got a word from God that God says that your flower's not going to run empty, your flower bin, and your oil jar is not going to run dry until the drought is over. I need you to trust me here that God is a way maker, that when you don't see it, even though you don't see it, he's still working. Come on. Even though all you see is circumstance, then all you see is a little bit of this and a little bit of How many of you know God can do amazing with a bit? I'll never forget. First church up past a few times. People rise. It was an amazing spiritual life. We were but we were tired. Number five. And I said something. To me. He's going along to be with Jesus. I'm a preacher friend of mine. And, and I said something to him about, yeah. I said, we just a, we just a little old country Baptist church. He said, boy, let me tell you one thing. And I'm glad 
he did it. I'm glad he got up in my face. He, did it. he was probably in his sick, late 60s when I was in my, my middle 20s, late 20s. And he said, well, let me tell you something. God does not have women in the churches. And I was like, you know what? That makes sense. Because God can take little and do amazing things. Come on. All she had was with but God was fixing to do amazing. And he, he, he says through Elijah, he says, all this crap's going on. She will not, she will not run. She will not. And what you and I, when all we do is we put, and I'm so guilty. I'm so I want to be way back to my invitation. If you can head that way. I'm so guilty of doing this. I'm so guilty of focusing on what I don't have. Or what we as a church don't have. Or what, what's not happening. You know, because of the pandemic and all the craziness is, that we look around and we see the emptiness and, and we think, you know, and I'm guilty guys. I'm, I'm and, and God's like, hey, can you quit focusing on the, the little bit of flour and the little bit of oil and focus on what I can do? What I can do with your little. I need you to focus on what I can do with your little. The amazing that I can do. Look at verse 15. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah. And she came and her household ate many days. And the bin of flour was not used up. Nor did the jar of oil run dry according to the word of the Lord which was spoken by Elijah. season you're going to go through this year. Maybe a timeout season. This year it'll happen. Maybe you've already been there. I don't know how long it's going to last. But here's what I do know. That my God, even all I see is drought, even though all I see is emptiness, even though all I see is uncertainty still, my God is sovereign. My God is working. My God is, is, is not. He's still who he is changed. Had changed. And, you, and, and even, even if it's a time out when you're in the will of God. Even when life throws you in time out and seasons of uncertainty. There's the God of provision that you've forgotten about.
where he's at. Same place he was yesterday. Still sitting on the throne. Still ordaining your steps. Still in control. Still God. Amen. Let that, let that bring you peace. And let that bring you comfort of who he is. Of who he is. Not what you're seeing. Not the, the, the brook drying up. Not the uncertainty of hiding out. Not the question marks that define your life. You see who he is. Because he is this determining factor in, in my journey this year. It's Jesus that's going to see me through. It's 